Good morning. Good morning. It is announcement time. So I ask everybody that has the, an announcement to make to please be up front and forward. And we will begin. Alden. You almost got wiped out there. <laughs> on? Yeah. This announcement is for the 12 folks that volunteer at respite time. Some of you got an invitation, some did not. Uh, the special time volunteer recognition luncheon is Tuesday, February 25. Tuesday, February 25. Be there about 1130. That's at the Living Waters uh, Lutheran Church. Um, there's no phone number on here. If you'll see me after church, I have the list. I'll make reservations for all of us. Just speak to me, and I'll include you with the list I turn in. Thank you. Thank you, Alden. Norma. Good morning. I'd like to thank everyone who volunteered to help at the rummage sale. It was awesome. Everybody did their job. Everything was kept neat and tidy. The cleanup was wonderful. All the men who help break it down, did their job. And a really big hand for Kathy Stizek, who rounded up everybody. She did an awesome, awesome job. And we made, yeah. Thank you, Kathy. And we made $893.70. Woohoo! Now, a uh, second notice. On Thursday is our seminar, the health seminar. It's about, it's in your bulletin, just read your bulletin, but I need you to sign up because we need to know how many people are coming. There's a card table just over by the bread area. I want you to sign up, please, um, so I know who's coming. It's from 10 to 12, um, and it's gonna be very informative for all seniors. We have to prepare for our own safety and, and being educated. And that's what I'm trying to do. This is part two. Now, on, we are gonna have our, of course, Valentine's Day is what, Saturday? Friday or Saturday? Friday. 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 And we are gonna have our Valentine's luncheon at the Fisherman's Village Fish House on Wednesday, next Wednesday, on the 19th. There's a sign-up sheet also on the same card table we have to have a kid count because we need to make reservations. All right? I, thank you. Um, I would like a celebration. Becky Rooney and Ralph would have been married 53 years this year. And Becky, this couple is the most awesome couple for this church, and Ralph is going to be so missed. And Becky, we thank you for everything that you do. Amen. Any other announcements? All right. Uh, it's uh, almost 10 o'clock, so let me give you the official welcome to our worship service here at the Northport Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We have a little ritual that we do. If you haven't already begun it, there's a red friendship book on the end of the pew towards the center aisle. We ask you to take that and open it and sign your name to it and pass it along to everyone in your row. And if you're visiting us for the first time, we appreciate it if you will give us your home address. And if your home address is here in the Northport uh, area, we like you to also include either a phone number and or an email address so we can reciprocate that we are so glad that you were here. And if you're a first-time visitor, we also have something for you. If you're a first-time visitor, could you raise your hand so we can give you our gift? No first-time visitors. All right. Uh, if you have a cell phone, we ask you to either uh, turn it off or put it on silent mode. Uh, please take note that there is a congregational meeting that will be held next Sunday following worship. Uh, and please plan to attend. And 
Uh, this is not a meeting just for the members of the church. This is uh, as much an information meeting and an exploration meeting as it is uh, a decision meeting. And it pertains to uh, what the job description uh, might be for a part-time pastor uh, of the church. So, you know, how would you uh, seek to divide up the time of a part-time pastor, which is what the search committee is currently looking for. So uh, it's an important meeting. Uh, on Sunday, February 23rd, following worship, there will be an inquirers group meeting for any of you who are not members, either full members or associate members of the church, and are inquiring as to what that might be, what is the mission and ministry and program of this church, and you know any of those kinds of questions that you might have considering the step of some form of membership. Meetings coming up this week. Today, following the worship service, there's going to be a chili cook-off. I guess that's uh, in regards to the weather outside. It's a little chilly out there. Uh, and also the ugly tie contest. So get your ugly ties in there to the fellowship uh, hall and uh, see who has the ugliest tie this year. This evening, Turning Point Youth will meet at 6.30. Monday, the deacons will have their regular meeting at 7 o'clock. Tuesday, the Reverend Susan Mitchell of the uh, Department of Capital Funds campaigns for the United Church of Christ will be here to meet with the council and other uh, leaders and interested people of the church as to what a capital fund campaign is and whether or not it might be a benefit for this church at some point in your future. And th she will also then be meeting on Wednesday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon with anyone and everyone who wants to find out why that capital fund, what a capital fund campaign is and uh, what it might do for this church. Uh, so two very important meetings. If you can't make one, make the other. Thursday, you already heard from Norma, is the senior alert information meeting at 10 o'clock. The search committee will meet Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. And next Saturday, uh, at 11 o'clock in the morning will be the celebration of life for our beloved Ralph Rooney. And now the children will take up the noisy coin collection and it will go to Christian education. <laughs>
Let us be in worship. I'm going to ask you to stand for our opening call to worship song, clap your hands, and we are going to sing it this week uh, as it is written. So we're going to take the repeats for the verses, and we're also going to take the repeat for the chorus. Go ahead. Clap your hands and sing to the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Snap your fingers, sing to the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift your hands and sing to the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
God. Blessed is the one who fears God and takes delight in God's commandment. Light rises in the darkness for the upright. The Lord is gracious, merciful, and righteous. We approach God's mercy with our confession. You are the light of the world, Lord Christ, yet we do not have to reflect that light. You have called us salt, but so often our lives are bland and inspire no one. Forgive our lackluster performance as actors in your drama of salvation. Set us right and renew us by your spirit. The light has come into the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Know that in receiving Christ, power is given to be children of God. Please be seated. <clears throat> the Gospel reading is from Matthew 5. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, I have come to abolish, not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. I'd like to invite the children who are already up front to come up front and join me on the front pew. The gospel reading that you just heard read this morning, boy, I think it's bright. That's nice. Because Jesus said that we are called to be lights to the world, just like that bright light. So I brought this lamp this morning, which is a bright desk light, in order to illustrate that. I want you to notice how bright it is. Well, it doesn't run on batteries. What could the problem be? It's not plugged in. Oh, it's not plugged in. Good heavens. Ah. There. Now I want you to notice how bright it is. Well, it's plugged in. What's the problem? Hmm? 
It, it, it's plugged in. It doesn't have batteries. It's plugged in. It's what? It's not on. John, do you have a suggestion? Oh, the switch. Oh, need to turn it on. All right. So it seems to be a double process there, huh? It's got to be plugged in and turned on. And that's the lesson this morning. We are called by God through Jesus to be lights to the world. But in order to be those lights to the world, the first thing is we need to be plugged in to God. And we need to be turned on by Jesus. And that's important so that we can let our lights shine. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for calling us to be lights to the world, but help us to be plugged into you and to be turned on by the love of Jesus Christ for us, that we might show the light to others. Amen. You've got your bulletins. You can go to your Sunday school class. And thanks for being here this morning. And we're going to sing to you on your way out. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. They are weak and he belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. 
The Old Testament reading is from the Isaiah 58. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion to the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet, day after day, they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgment. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast but not see you? We, um, why humble ourselves? But you do not notice. Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush? and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring forth up quickly your vindicator shall go before you the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard then you shall call and the Lord will answer You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. A colleague of mine once told the story that when he was a child, He used to give up peanut butter and chocolate during Lent. It was his way of showing his best buddy. His best buddy was one of those who went to church every Sunday. That he was just as good a person as was his best buddy. And it was also his insurance that God would not push him through the trap door that leads to hell. His friend was also one who told him about the trap door that leads to hell. He said to him, When you die, unless you are a saint, they put you in this middle room. And then if your friends pray a lot for you, the angels will lower a rope ladder, like a police helicopter, making a rescue and then fly you away to heaven. But if you stay too long in that room, and they've got to make room for newer arrivals, they shove you through this big trap door that drops you right down into hell. But if you give up something for Lent, God writes it down and sends the helicopter and you make it into heaven. Well, as a second grader, that's all this youngster needed to hear. He decided right then and there to give up his two most favorite things for Lent, peanut butter and chocolate. Two of the major food groups, right? (laughs) Now, it's easy for us as adults to hear this story and laugh and snicker with all the wisdom of our adult sophistication. And yet there is something in this story that is more than entertainment of a younger youngster's stumbling efforts to please God. For when it comes to religion, it is true that the child is father or mother of the man or the woman. Our childhood response of faith and fear rumble in our hearts long after we've grown up 
and they erupt into patterns of belief and behavior. Whenever life seems particularly difficult and the forces of darkness are against us, we fall back into simplistic efforts to win God's favor. And this is exactly what happened to the Israelites when they returned to Jerusalem from their exile in Babylon 400 years before Christ. And that's the setting of the scripture that you just heard read from the book of Isaiah. The holy city for which they grieved had yearned and prayed while they were in Babylon turned out to be nothing but a dump when they returned home. The streets, their homes, and the wall that goes around the city were all lying in rubble. It was a hangout for hooblums and muggers. And so there they were, faced with this situation that had the stamp of urban blight everywhere. The streets were a mess, and they were filled with the wretched homeless. And so how did the Israelites react to this scary social situation that was all about them? Well, they did what people very often do when they feel threatened by forces over which they have little understanding or direct control. They got very religious. They formed one of the largest back-to-church movements in their collective history. And they gave up peanut butter and chocolate when they should have been taking adult responsibility for the world in which they lived. That is to say, they fasted. They took their children to synagogue classes. They called on God and took some special time out for special days of prayer and prayer fasts, sort of like holding political prayer breakfasts. But apparently, God wasn't terribly impressed. In fact, according to our scripture, God wasn't even really very interested. God wanted them to be faithful rather than religious, to be loyal to the demands for building a just and decent city to take responsibility for the demands of rebuilding a truly human community. Well, like those Israelites, and like the youngster in my story, we are tempted to react to our complex personal social issues today by appealing to God with deals that win God's favor. Most of us are familiar with the trap door that leads to hell. It's located inside our minds at that spot where our fears overtake us and the bottom of our world seems to fall out from under us. It happens to us individually and as a society. The trap door has been opened by terrorists and terrorist activities in our country and around the world, by the drastic increases in random violence and shootings, which are no longer, as we know, confined to big cities. Terror of all types has penetrated our lives so that now we know the fears that we didn't used to have. We feel ourselves falling, falling, falling towards hell, towards the chaos of a world that threatens to overwhelm us with its complete and utter complexity and lack of sensible boundaries. We might feel as though we are riding a bicycle that has no handles. Is this not the fast that I require 
to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Spiritual renewal, prayer, and praise are the wick and the candle of a Christian's inner light. But who lights a lamp and then puts it under a bushel basket? Let your light so shine says Jesus. Let it shine in your politics. Let it shine in your community. Let it shine in your acceptance and care of all people. Be the salt of the earth that God proclaims you to be, the agent of healing and preservation that God intends for you to be. Then, God will send the helicopter, not only in death, but in life. Or, as Isaiah puts it, Then shall you take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has created the world and everything that is in it, and has called us to righteousness, to right relationships with you, and has called us to be the light and the salt of the earth, and has placed that power and energy within us, be with us as we would fulfill our calling, as we would be faithful people to your world. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. said, how long do you think a worship service should be? And I said, there's got to be a, uh, a statement behind that question. And he says, our service last Sunday was an hour and 45 minutes. And he says, shouldn't they only be about an hour? <laughs> well, our service here last Sunday went to about a quarter after. And I said, well, if we're going to average this out, I'm going to make this one shorter. So... We're going to average an hour, folks. <laughs> Celebrations. What would you like to celebrate? Norma. I would like everybody to go and visit the ladies' room and check it out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Okay, guys, there's your invitation. <laughs> Other celebrations. From Austin, Texas. Okay, nice to have you here. Is it cold there or is it freezing there? All right. D. Today? Okay. Other celebrations. I have to take a breath first. For three years, I had a lot of difficulty with my voice. I have a strong tremor, and I can't get my breath. But thanks to a gentleman in my car who was a speech pathologist, I was referred to a woman who does voice aerobics. And it is my greatest pleasure to be able to sing the anthem without difficulty. Okay. So I praise Wonderful. You. Wonderful. Yeah. Because of a speech pathologist, she's able to sing now. Other celebrations? Not even close. <laughs> but anyway, he had an experience of his, at his county tourney. Now this is a bunch of eighth graders, seventh and eighth graders, and he has been a coach for 35 years. And they were having a little trouble, you know, getting their scores up to match the other score. And the parents <coughs> Other celebrations. Barbara. What's that? Beautiful day today. Okay. Norma. Okay. Any others? Let us turn to our concerns. What are your concerns, prayers that you would like to? Barbara. Yeah, I'm going to stand up because um, well, I, I might be seen and heard. I have two major concerns. Number one, I am going to Jamaica this Friday. Everybody might say going to Jamaica couldn't be a concern, but it is. I have three brothers who are three bachelors that live together, and the caregiver among them had a stroke. So I have to go home and see if I can tighten up some loose ends. And I need your prayers, not only for them, but also for me. Yeah. Um, my other concern is that because I'm leaving for Jamaica on Friday, 
I will not be able to attend the celebration of Ralph Rooney's life on Saturday. And that has been very painful for me. Ralph has been one of my best friends. Becky knows the relationship we had. It was a relationship of great fun and joy to be together. We served on the diaconate for, I think, two years, and we were always on the same page. <coughs> Ralph and I had a way of throwing sarcasm at each other. He would throw it at me, and I would give it right back to him. <laughs> and that was our form of endearment. And Ralph was just a simple man and loved the simple things of life. And he's been an inspiration to this congregation, not only to the adults, but also to the children who adored him. It was so wonderful to just see how he reacted to the children and how he just brought them together on his knees sometimes like Jesus did. They gravitated towards him like bees to honey. Uh, Ralph, one of the chief things that I remember about Ralph is how he could sing the Lord's Prayer. And I said the Lord's Prayer was made for Ralph. Even when he came in with labored, when his breathing was labored, and when it came time for him to sing the Lord's Prayer, I don't know where he got the strength from, but he would sing it with such gusto and such enthusiasm, praising the Almighty. And we will always remember him for the Lord's Prayer. Nobody could sing it like Ralph. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Norma? Hmm. <clears throat> okay, so our prayers are with Merle. Yeah. <clears throat> the song. Yes. Right. And <laughs> okay, prayers for Luzon's sister. She's having a brain surgery on Friday. Brain surgery on Friday. Yeah. I mentioned last week a brother-in-law in Indiana who was seriously ill, and uh, he died yesterday. Okay, so Alan's brother-in-law died yesterday in Indiana. Yeah, all right. Okay, and Becky, our prayers continue with you and your family, and. Barbara's already started things. We, we look forward to a wonderful celebration of Ralph's life, as hard as that's going to be for us. Let us pray. Our gracious God, we do thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for family, for friends, for the love that we share with one another in so many ways. We thank you for the fellowship of this church and the support. We ask that your blessings might be carried forth from here as light into the streets of this community and into the world as we would be faithful to you. We lift up to you our concerns that we share this morning for people who are suffering the loss of loved ones, facing surgeries, needing help and support as they give care to loved ones, amongst family and friends. We pray for our community, our nation and the world. We pray for the athletes that have been brought together for the Olympics. 
that they may only participation in concern might be their performance and not outside dire events. We ask, oh God, that you bless each and every person here as she and he strive to be ever faithful. Hear us now as we bring to you our silent prayers. And as we symbolize our unity of spirit and the oneness of Christ, let us join our voices in our unison prayer. Almighty God, you have called us to be sent forth for your own purposes, not because we are so skillful or strong, but according to your own graciousness. We humbly set before you our lives. Accept us and direct us that we might be witnesses of your light to all nations. Through Christ. Amen. Let us now express our gratitude and our willingness to serve in the bringing of our gifts. As Jesus multiplied the loaves and fishes, bless and multiply these offerings, we pray. May they light and season the world so that all may reap a harvest of liberation, healing, and comfort. Amen.
the blessing of God who creates great things from small, from Jesus who appoints us as his representatives, and the Holy Spirit that empowers us to be of service, rest upon us. Amen. Amen.